Hi, uh, this is Dima Brook from XP Network. And today we're going to speak about transferring NFTs from Hedera. Uh, even though Hedera is EVM, it's a bit different from the other EVM chains. And therefore, it might be interesting to see the differences here. Uh, most of the differences were hidden in our XPJS library. And so you will see how easily we can transfer those NFTs regardless of the differences that Hedera has. Well, first of all, let's follow the instruction. We have a special repository called Testing Hedera in our um, company repository. So the first thing we can do is we can just clone this repository onto our computer to begin. So let's go to desktop like this and clone this repository there. Okay, there we are. So the next thing we have to do is we have to enter this repository, uh, yarn to install the packages, and then start working with the environment variables. So let's leave the console with this, and we see it here. So let's open it with our Visual Studio code. Like so, it's loading. Let's go to a desktop and just hold it. Okay, so here we are. Now we see that we have an example env that we will have to populate with the correct variables. Now I will do that in, in the background. In the meantime, let's run yarn to install the packages. Okay, so while the packages are being installed, I'll put populate that my environment variables a bit invisible for you because it has private keys that is to be visible by anyone else. Okay, so there we are. I populated it. I also have to rename uh, in the example just to env. Now we can go back to viewing everything all together. Okay, here we are. And these populated. Okay, and here we have the files that will allow us to work with header. So first, in, let's, let's see how it is built, just for us to be able to understand what we're dealing with here. As, as you can see that this is the configuration file. It collects all the variables from our environment. And then we check that the variables are even there. So we have this small uh, utility function that I called uh, check if set. It accepts two parameters. Uh, the first parameter is the variable itself. And the second is the string representation of the same variable. And what we're doing is if this variable is missing, we're throwing an error saying that this variable, calling it by the name, is not set in the environment. Uh, there are several ways of setting the environment. It doesn't have to be our env file. We can actually set it dynamically in our terminal every time we're running the project. So this is why we're setting, saying that we didn't set it in the environment and we are not mentioning the env file. And then we have this setup function. In the setup function, we are creating a factory. Uh, this factory allows to universally work with different uh, protocols of different chains. Here, as you can see, we're setting it to the testnet. Uh, then we're uh, using this factory uh, to create the holder handlers of two chains, BSC and Hedera. Uh, we will be transferring between those chains. And we are creating a signer object uh, we're using a wallet, which we import from Hashgraph Heathers. 
This is a library specific for Hedera, and this is the difference with other EVMs. Uh, there we would import this wallet from Ethers, but here we're importing this from Hashgraph Heathers, which is their uh, version of Ethers library. And uh, the way we populate this wallet with different uh, variables is a bit different uh, from what we usually do in Ethers. In Ethers, we usually just have the private key of the sender. But here, apart from the private key, we also set the account of the sender. Obviously, because the private key can be valid for multiple accounts. Uh, there, we also say that uh, Edwards uh, 25519 type is true. And then we are also adding the provider of Hedera, which points to the network and allows to interact with the blockchain. And then we return all those parameters. So let's go to the listing part. So this file allows us to list NFTs that uh, our account has on Hedera. Um, so here, in order to list, we have to provide at least the address uh, so that we can reuse this function multiple times. And here, we're calling this function just to see how it even works. So we have to extract the signer from our setup from the previous configuration file. And then we will get a list of all the NFTs that this account owes on Hedera. So let's open a terminal. Let's clear it from the previous uh, commands. And let's run it in a yarn. List NFTs. OK, and here it shows us the command that we are running in reality. Uh, so we're using TypeScript to compile the TypeScript files to JavaScript, and then we run them with Node. And the file is called list. So we create this list file in the build folder and run it. And then we can see that we received uh, two NFTs that we uh, have on header. Uh, in case we want to create our own NFTs, we can go to uh, header wallet. Let me see where I have it here. Okay, hashback. Okay, I got, got it. Um, log into the wallet. And let's check in the wallet. I have exactly two NFTs. And this is what our uh, NFT indexer tells me as well. So it has that I have two NFTs. Uh, chain ID 29 stands for Hedera. And I have two NFTs, one with ID 1 and another with ID 2. So in case I want to mint those NFTs myself, I can go to D apps. I can choose demo app. Here in the demo app, I can say mint tokens. There I have to select my account. Uh, I have to specify that this is an NFT. Uh, here I have to provide the metadata, which is a link to the metadata of this NFT. And here I should put the token ID. So for example, uh, let's mint another NFT together here. And let me just uh, find the token, the correct token ID here. Let's try maybe something like this. And let's provide the metadata. Like so. And let's try to mint it. We call it a call approve. We're waiting for it to execute. And we haven't provided the correct token ID. OK, that's fine. So we have to replace it with the right one. Uh, just to, just a second. Let's, let's try to find it where we had it before. So OK, so here is the correct token ID. And now we can send this transaction to the chain and uh, prove it. 
Okay. So here we can see the result. And let's go, let's cancel this window. Let's go back to the NFTs. And I guess it just hasn't been updated. Okay, there we go. We have three different NFTs here. And let's again test our NFT indexer from code. So let's clear the screen again. Let's run NFT list NFTs once again, and we're supposed to see three NFTs this time. And let's wait a little bit. And there we go. We can see three NFTs. All right. Now let's comment out the calling part. So because you see it has exit codes in any case, in case of success and failure, which will prevent our uh, further uh, functions from succeeding. So that's why we are closing it, because we're actually going to reuse this function that we want here in the transfer uh, function. Okay, so what we will do here is we will use the function that we created in the previous file, uh, we will see how many of those we have, and we will select uh, NFT with index zero, or we can actually select any, any other NFT. So if we select NFT with index zero, we will get a token ID three, which is fine. Or let's, what we can do uh, something else, we can also take length of the NFTs, for example, and uh, say minus one, and this is how we are selecting the last NFT from the list, which will be number one. So probably let's do that. So that we remember that we still have NFTs two and three left here. Let's, let's also go over uh, the transfer function itself. So first it takes, uh, as a parameter, it takes the chain of departure and the chain of destination and the selected NFT and the sign object that we created on the previous stages. Uh, then the receiver address is the address that we uh, populated the env file with. It's the address that will receive this NFT on the chain of destination, which is BC on our side. Uh, and then the things that are somewhat different uh, from other chains, uh, they are. So first we have to provide the transaction fee. Uh, on many other chains, it is calculated automatically. If we're not sending to some specific contract on the destination chain, then we can leave these parameters undefined and it will add to them. Uh, default contract. And then we have to add some extra fees uh, to make sure that this transaction goes through. So these are the differences and this is why we uh, paid attention to this. You can also find the values that you have to populate these variables with here. So the header fee will be this uh, number. And our extra fee will be this number. If something goes wrong with the fees, you can always go to your env file, play with those two variables to make sure that the transaction actually goes through. Okay, so this seems to be all set and let's now clear the terminal. And now we run yarn transfer, like so. And again. Um, Okay, I made uh, an error. So yarn transfer. Okay. okay, so this is the selected NFT, which is number one. And, and we see that it will be minted with a default contract. And we see that the transaction succeeded. It was done in 16 seconds and now all we have to do is we can go to uh, bc to the other side and check that this nft has arrived there uh, it's going to take some time so i'm going to pause this video to make sure that the transaction succeeded on the other side and then we will check that it's there And like I said, the transaction successfully arrived to the Binance chain approximately 55 seconds ago. And you see that the script works and everything's fine. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe.
to not to miss our future videos and see you next week. Bye.